Shalom, shalom, everyone. Greeting you live from Jerusalem, Israel. Um, some of you may have joined us, the Christian Embassy, just the past hour-ish uh, for a global prayer gathering online. And man, it, 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 it's, all, it's, already, uh, it's already session two, right? It's already the second gathering that we've had um, since last week. And we, we, um, we, have, uh, we have had, what's happening? We have had speakers and, and guests. Um, Daniel Colenda was in there. Um, Tom Hess was in there. Angus Bokhan was in there. Jurgen Bueller was in there. And a couple of different people, Suzette Hadding, I'm just like on a high right now because that gathering was just ah, so powerful. Um, I don't know about you, but if you were a part of that session earlier, um, our prayer session online, man, I was bawling my eyes midway. Um, just the word from from these evangelists, you know, and, and what they were sharing to everyone um, tuning in um, was so powerful. And it's so obvious that it was the Holy Spirit talking to each soul in that um, gathering. You know, we had over 3,000 people join on the Zoom conference and we had over 17,000 people join via Facebook Live. So come, come in, everyone. Come in. Um, I just wanted to give you guys an update of what's happening here in Israel, where we're at and uh a special message from the Lord today, okay? So if you know someone's going to be encouraged, uh, I, I suggest uh, that you share this to your friends, to your community, maybe host a, a watch party. Um, but again, earlier, just an hour-ish ago, we had a global prayer gathering, Care of the Christian Embassy. It was online, and more than... 20,000 people were online tuning in. 17,000 people on Facebook Live and more than 3,000 people joined on the Zoom conference. And I just wanted to share to everyone uh, on here right now that the Lord is doing something so big. You know, He is really doing something so big um, in our midst. Um, and there is a message for you and I today, especially um, if you're from the church, if you're from the body of Christ. And But guess what? There's also a message for you today if, if you are not part of the church and if you do not belong to the, to the body of God yet. You know, I truly believe that this message is universal because the whole world is affected by it. Okay, so... Just letting everybody know that today, on a Wednesday, it's April 8th, Wednesday. It's about um, quarter past six in the, in the evening here in Israel. Um, yesterday, our government, right, uh, our Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has announced a very strict, uh, well, stricter um, regulations around our global lockdown. I mean, national lockdown right now. Okay, so... For the past three, four weeks, we've already been house quarantined and on a lockdown, but we're still able to go out for groceries and all that. Um, still able to go out 10 minutes um, and 100 meter distance from our residences the past three, four weeks, right? Um, but yesterday, uh, the government just announced uh, just stricter uh, res restrictions around that. Starting today, 4 p.m. up until Sunday, right? Um, we cannot leave the houses and all businesses will be shut down just because we are uh, welcoming Passover holiday, okay? So Passover uh, is uh, one of the feasts here in Israel, one of the holidays that the Jewish people celebrate. And if you read the Bible uh, and, and you remember it from the book of Exodus, it's the last plague, all right? It's the last plague that the Lord has allowed to um, enter Egypt uh, to deliver the Israelites from the hands of Pharaoh. Um, I suggest, this is like the perfect and the most uh, ideal time to catch the Prince of Egypt. It's a cartoon. Changed my life um, ever since I saw it as a kid, but one of the best musical scores as well. But it's, it's basically the story of how the Israelites um, were redeemed and were delivered and were freed from the Egyptians. Um, so the Passover, if you have your Bibles with you, 
inviting everybody tuning in. Come, come. If you're going to be encouraged by the word, share this to your uh, friends, your families. Um, host watch parties. Um, stay here for the next five minutes. If you have your Bible, come read with me. Let's all go to the book of Exodus. All right, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. All right, it shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. So each household um, across Egypt, right? Each household in the Israel, uh, amongst the Israelites should have a, a, a lamb, like a personal lamb for each household, each house, each family. That was an instruction from the Lord uh, for, for Moses and Aaron to tell the people. Verse 4, And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of people. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Lamb is cordero, okay? Shall be without blemish, a male year, uh, a male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood, okay, of the lamb that they're gonna kill, and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. All right, so they shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. In this manner, you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. The Lord says, it is the Lord's Passover. And this is the reason why it's called the Passover. We're all listening. This is the reason why it's called the Passover. If you have your Bibles with you, Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord, says Adonai. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day, the Lord's Passover, God says, this day shall be for you a memorial day and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. As a statue forever, you shall keep it as a feast. And then we jump over to verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, right? The Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. Another version says the destroyer is called the spirit of death. So the reason why it's called the Passover is because, again, if we go track it back a little bit, when we started reading the chapter uh, of, this, of this book, Exodus chapter 12, every household, every family, every house during this time in Exodus, okay, Israelite time, historical, history. Even if you don't read the Bible, you look at, the, you look at historical books and how the, how the Israelites were redeemed and delivered and, and were freed from, from Egypt. This has happened. Like all the plagues have happened. Okay, so um, the instruction from the Lord was very clear. Every house, every family, every, every um, unit, right, should have a lamb without blemish, pure, Okay, Un clean, the cleanest, right? And when they kill it, for, for them to partake, they have to use the blood to, to put it over their doorposts outside of their houses, one on each doorpost and the lintel above. So if you see like the pictures online or if you just type pass over um, on Google, right? You search what it's about, you will almost always would see like an image of a doorpost, like that, um, the entrances of the houses, right? With blood stains, either on the one, one on each side and on top. And the reason behind this is when, what the Lord was saying, this is the final plague that I will release, 
right? Um, in Egypt. This is the final plague that I will allow um, to just go through Egypt. When the spirit of death, when the destroyer, the Bible says, passes through the land, right? Passes through the land and it sees the blood stains on the posts. It will pass over that household and will keep them from death. Because what the plague was, was every firstborn of any family, any family, will be killed. And this was, you know, this was something um, that the Lord allowed because he was serious about his people. He was serious about freeing the Israelites. And he was serious about the love for his people. And he was serious about telling Pharaoh and letting Pharaoh and and the Egyptians know that he was God. He was sovereign and he was in control of every life. You know, fast forward to today, friends. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna like, I need you to listen. Okay. Fast forward to today, 2020. Ever since that time, right? This has never repeated itself up until today. Yesterday, um, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the acting um, president or or the head of the government here in Israel, just announced, all right, because of the coronavirus that the whole world is experiencing and because of statistics here in the land has been growing, right? Any country, every nation, we already know this. For the past four or five weeks, we've Everyone is on a standstill. Every nation's on a standstill. Yesterday, Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu just announced that from t- today, Wednesday, 4 p.m., up until um, Sunday, there will be no one allowed to go out of their houses. All of the businesses will be shut down. Okay? This is the first time in history that all of the families in the Jewish state, in, in, in the whole Israel um, nation, that they will be confided in their own houses and, and in their own households without celebrating Passover and the holiday with their extended families. This is the first time it's gonna, it's, it has happened since the book, in, since Exodus, since the time in Exodus, since, since the, the release and the deliverance and the freedom of the Israelites during the time of Exodus, okay? Which is why it is so historical, which is why it is so just, oh my goodness, is it a coincidence that this is happening amidst the coronavirus, you know what I mean? And this is what I believe, okay? With the global pandemic that we're experiencing, this is not just a call for the church to wake up. And to really um, unite ourselves in spirit and in truth, in prayer, in evangelism, in stronger faith, you know. But this is as well a time for everybody to just realize that what's happening around the world cannot be um, unattached or or disconnected from Israel. You know what I mean? From the Holy Land. This is true. And I'm telling you because... Um, I've been here for more than a year now and talking to you right now from a religious perspective and from just an observer, right? From a Gentile's perspective and someone who reads the Bible, um, everything that happens in the Holy Land, in Jerusalem, in Israel, it affects like the whole world, um, whether we acknowledge it or not. And the reason why we need to um, see the value of, of the shift, of the change that's happening during the Passover at this time is because it's literally the universal message of the Lord to the world. You know, it's not just every everyone confided in their houses, spending time with their families and, you know, cultivating um, more intentional time with the Lord. But my gosh, this is history in the making for the Jewish state. They've never been in their houses personally. Like they, they've never been restricted from going out and celebrating Passover um, with the rest of their families up until today. And the only time this has happened was during the time they were in Egypt the time in Exodus before they were going to be released and and freed by the Lord from the hands of Pharaoh. All of that to say, because we're approaching uh, Pesach, Pesach is Passover. We're we're approaching Pesach tonight. Um, 
before the Passover happened, a lot of plagues happened, right? If you look at the book of Exodus um, and you read the chapters before chapter 12, um, we see the different plagues the Lord uh, allowed for for the world to experience. Locusts, you know, um, the sea turning into blood, um, it, boils in the bodies of people all of these plagues happened and and it caused for for a global shaking and then the final plague was the spirit of death you know the final plague was a destroyer the bible calls it and this is just a call for us to really be awake if we miss the message of this whole global shutdown right and i believe the message is for us to really realize who the lamb is, who the Passover lamb is. This is a question for everyone today, all right? Um, The Bible says every household should have its own lamb during this time, Passover, right? And I know all around the world, um, Western countries would be celebrating Easter, would be celebrating uh, Resurrection Sunday this Sunday, right? Right? But it's very crucial for the church especially to realize the Hebraic roots um, of Christianity. Like before the Resurrection Sunday began, we were talking about Passover, you know. And it's very crucial because Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. Seha Elohim. He is the Lamb of God. Cordero ng Diyos. Right? He is the Lamb of God. My question is... Now that we are all confided in our personal homes, we don't have a choice, right? It's a global protocol, right? That uh, wherever you may be, whether you're already experiencing coronavirus at its peak, you're in the middle or you're just in a, in a space or you're part of a nation that's still transitioning to it, I'm telling you, this is a global shaking from the Lord. And, and what this is telling me, aligning it with the Passover celebration, every household, number one, should be in their own houses, right? You can't go to your neighbor. You can't go to your cousins. You can't go to your grandparents. You have to be in your own house only with your family. That was the instruction from the Lord, Exodus uh, chapter 12. And number two, every household should have a lamb, You know, every household should have an unblemished, clean, pure lamb for them to partake of and for them to use the blood to cover their doorposts with because the spirit of death is about to come. So whose blood are we covered with today? You know, brothers and sisters, friends and family, I am here to tell you that the blood of the Lamb is Yeshua the Christ. Jesus Christ has already paid for all your sins, the past, present, and future. The reason why He is called the Lamb of God is because of what He did at Calvary for you and I. More than 35,000, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, came to the world in flesh form. He became man. Can you imagine humbling himself down? God humbled himself down. I'm being emotional now because I'm just like feeling the Holy Spirit um, so powerfully at this time. God, in all of his love and care for you and I, crafted a plan, okay? Oh my goodness. (laughs) Crafted a plan to make sure that you and I will still be reconciled with him at the end of time. The whole strategy was Jesus Christ, okay? We have to wake up and we have to realize this. This is not forcing someone to convert. This is the announcement of the truth, okay? And let me tell you this. Um, just a week ago, or maybe just even a few days ago, right? Uh, um, bookstores, I, I know it's Walmart from the States, they were running out of Bibles, out of stock. Why? Because people were, were wanting to get the truth, and they know that the Bible is the source of truth. Whether you're an atheist, or whether you're someone who's already a professed Christian, but you're, you're on a dry space, or whether you're someone really fuming with the, with, the, with the fire of the Holy Spirit, 
this is the truth. You know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ came to the earth, lived a life as man, performed miracles right before the eyes of the world to proclaim that He is Messiah. Jesus Christ. What does Christ mean? Christ means Mashiach, Messiah, the Savior, the one who is only capable, only able, and is only fit. All right? He is the only one who fits the requirements. That's why he's called the Lamb of God. Nobody else will fit that role of being Messiah of the world today. For the Jewish people, for the Christian people, for the Muslim people, for any type of people group, Jesus Christ is the only one who claimed to be Messiah, who was crucified, buried, dead, and rose again. For the people who are still waiting for the Messiah to come, let me tell you this. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. The Messiah has already come. All right? Um, Baruch haba Bashem Adonai. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. And friends, I just want to remind you, you know, as we enter into Passover globally, whether you're in Israel or not, you have the Bible with you. And I encourage you to read Exodus, okay? Um, chapter 12, 11 onward, chapter 11 onward, and try to read the historical roots of Christianity and of the Israel state. This is very crucial, especially if you're part of the Christian community. We have to realize why is Jesus called the Lamb of God? It's more than the sacrifice, you know? It's, it's all about the global agenda of the Lord for humanity, you know what I mean? So fast forward to Passover 2020. Historical, because it's never happened in history that all of the Jewish families are supposed to be celebrating Passover within their houses alone. So first time to na nangyari na hindi sila pwedeng lumabas. And, and Passover is like one of the biggest, if not, you know, there are only three biggest feasts and events um, that happen across the land of Israel. That's Pesach, Passover, that's Shavuot, Pentecost, and Sukkot. Um, the Feast of Tabernacles. These are um, appointed meetings that the Lord has said in the Bible from the very beginning to the end that He will meet with His people personally with, with, with full intention in meeting them eye to eye, heart to heart. So now, historically, his history in the making, because again, we've, they've never celebrated Passover, just confided in their personal homes since the story in Exodus. Um Whose blood are we upon? Whose blood are we um, putting over our doorposts today? You know, I, I believe that the coronavirus and this global pandemic is just the beginning of what's about to come. Okay, this is, I don't know when the end of age is. Nobody knows that. The Bible is very clear that no one will know the time, the hour, the day when Jesus returns right? Um, to judge the world. But this is what I know. Jesus has said in the Bible that I stand at the door of your heart and I have been knocking. Are you going to let me in? My question to you is, and my question to you and your family and the household that you represent, whose blood are you on? Whose blood are you posting on your doorposts, right? Who, are, who do you belong to? And it's never too late. The Bible says Jesus is very close to the brokenhearted. Jesus is very close to the ones who seek. The Father, Adonai, hears the ones who seek Him with all of their hearts, their minds, their souls, their being. The message of this global pandemic is for us to repent. The message for this global pandemic, the Spirit of the Lord says, is for us to repent. Whether you're a Christian or not, this is the time to repent. Not just for you, but for your household. This is a call for all households to, to come together, to pray, to read the scripture, to spend time intentionally with each other growing in relationship with each other as a family, but more than anything, hearing from the Lord as a family. Because the Lord cares for you and your family. 
You know, he doesn't just care for you, but he cares for your household and the household you represent, the nation you represent. Now is the time to repent, to purify our hearts. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, God says, will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, cease from evil, and repent, ask for forgiveness, then... Then I will heal their land, right? I mean, it's a conditional statement. If you do this, then this will happen. It's not, it's not, it's not something that's unsure. God is sure with what he says. The Bible says, whatever word that goes out from his mouth, it will never return to him void. It will never return to him empty. So if God says, if you repent today, I will will heal your land. Brothers and sisters, as we enter into Pesach, Passover today, tonight, Israeli time, I encourage you to number one, pray for the land of Israel, for all of the Jewish people and and the Christians here um, who are confided in their personal spaces, for personal homes, right? Um, Who are seeking the Lord, that the Holy Spirit would just meet with them, that a divine appointment from the Holy Spirit would just be so strongly, um, you know, welcomed in their personal homes and their houses, that even before the spirit of death, even before the destroyer comes and penetrates the land, that they would have a divine encounter with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus alone. And secondly, this is the time to just pray together for the nations, Okay. I I love that we have downtime. I love that the precious gift in our hands right now is time. You know, we do not have an excuse for not spending precious time with our Savior at this very um, uh, special moment in our lives today. My worry and my my, um, fear is that when this whole banning is lifted when all the restrictions are gone, people would just go back to their lives in an instant, regular programming like nothing has happened. God is saying, my gosh, do not return from your old ways like you were before. Let this be an awakening for us. Like, again, he is already the one who's making full effort and full initiative in making you spend time with him. Do you know what I mean? Siya na yung gumawa ng paraan para mag-spend tayo ng time with Him. Use this time. Take advantage of this time to call out to your Savior. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Ask Jesus to come into your lives. Ask Jesus to come into your households. Because I'm telling you this. The Spirit of the Lord says, 2020 will be the fulfillment of what he has said in the word, okay? And what I mean by that is the victories and the trials and the tribulations and the prophecies that he has said in the word. Are we ready? Right? This is preparation stage, you know? If you're not taking advantage of this time, seeking the Lord with all your heart, you're going to miss the point of why this global pandemic has happened in the first place. You know what I mean? I really feel strongly in my spirit to say that because it's true. Again, this is not a religious call. This is the global call, you know, and it's the truth. We don't have a choice. All the nations are hungry for peace. All the nations are hungry for healing, One of the names of the Lord is Jehovah Rofeka. That means the healer. He is the only one who is able to heal souls. He is the only one who is able to heal nations. You know, the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came for us to have abundant lives and experience life to the full. So if you are someone today who is who are not experiencing right who's not who is not experiencing life to the full i'm telling you the secret to that is yeshua hamashiach jesus the christ jesus the messiah jesus the savior and 
as we inter you know get to interface with this truth that's happening in the land in the city of God in Jerusalem in Israel that every Jewish family is experiencing something very historical with them not being able to go out of their house during Passover I encourage you to keep this nation in prayer for the spirit of salvation to just be upon every household but at the same time make this an awakening for your nation an awakening for the whole of the nations for the whole world in this special pesach season passover holiday you know it's not just a jewish feast it's not just a jewish holiday the god says remember this feast throughout all generations it's an instruction from the mouth of the lord himself and as gentiles as as um bible believing christians it's very valuable for us to know these instructions that he is giving his chosen people i believe in my heart that god has a heart for two groups of people his chosen people the israelites and his people by faith right his children by faith righteousness by faith and that's us you know grafted in the olive tree so take advantage of this time let's all wake up let's be more intentional in really welcoming um the spirit of the lord upon ourselves and upon our households let's not miss the point of all this pandemic that's happening uh, around the world you know we can spend time uh, on social media um cultivating you know whatever it is that we're happily doing in our free time but my appeal to you as just your sister in Christ and as your friend a family member is don't miss the whole point of this lockdown right lockdown throughout the world it's god initiating and making all the efforts himself for you to spend time with him joshua says in the bible in scripture in 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 the book of joshua uh towards the end of the chapters right towards the end of the book as for me and my household we will serve the lord this pass over whose blood do you belong to all right i just pray in the name of jesus that the blood that we get to put on our doorposts is nothing else but yeshua's it's, it's nobody else's but jesus christ's he's the only one who has the capacity and who has the right requirements right F- for for the blood that we have to use for the spirit of death for the destroyer to pass over our households no plague shall touch you if you belong to Jesus Christ and i just want to close with um a verse from mark chapter 1 verse 15 jesus himself was was saying this as he was preaching the good news when he came into galilee jesus says the appointed period of time is fulfilled it's already been completed and the kingdom of god is at hand repent He says repent have a change of mind which issues in regret for past sins and in change of conduct for the better and believe people of God trust in rely on and adhere to the good news the gospel that I'm bringing to you today says Jesus Christ repent that word meaning means you have to have a change of mind you have to have a shift of your mind you have to have some sort of regret for all the sins that you've done repentance it's not just confession it's not just, it's not just saying sorry for the sins you've done repentance is is a shift it's like a, a decision that would really change your whole being from the inside out that would make you um let go of what you've been doing for something new you want to you want to let go put off that old self right and put on the new clothing of the righteousness that you received from Jesus Christ that's what Jesus is saying in this verse now is the appointed time i think it's in greek when they call it kairos it's the it's the appointed time there's no other time this is the ripest time this is the time if you're waiting for for a se- this is it i'm telling you it has never been aligned so much with scripture than ever before can you imagine What's happening right now pass over across Israel never happened since the time in Exodus when they were about to be freed from the hands of Pharaoh. I think that's 
I don't know about you, but that's the Holy Spirit like talking to the world. Not just to the Jewish people, but to the world. You know, like wake up, open your eyes, let those who have eyes see, let those who have ears hear, let those who have hearts and minds conceive, you know, what God is telling you right now. This is the appointed time, Jesus says in in the book of Mark, to repent, to cease from evil, to have a shift, to have a shift in your intellect, to have a heart that's solely consecrated to me because only then will you be healed only then will you receive salvation and righteousness from the lamb of god hallelujah um this is the best opportunity for us the church to evangelize if if you know the great commission that jesus has said to his disciples in matthew Um, Go forth, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is the apostolic age, um, version 2020, for our generation today. The works of the Holy Spirit has never been escalated ever. You know what I mean? You will, mark my word, you will start to see miracles happen before your eyes as the global church welcomes the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit in their spaces. All of the nations are hungry for truth. All of the nations are hungry for salvation. All of the nations are hungry just for this epidemic to end. Sounds familiar in Exodus for the plagues to end. And I'm telling you, the only thing, the only name that will finish all these plagues is Jesus Christ and what he's done for you and I. Um, This is the opportunity of a lifetime, but we must seize the lifetime of the opportunity for it to be in its full effect, you know? And as the body of Christ, please, um, let's stand together in spirit and truth, in intercession. We were all called to be prayer warriors. We were all called to be watchmen and watchwomen. For our, for our households, for the nations we represent, and for the land of Israel. Remember, bless Israel and you will be blessed. Curse Israel and you will be cursed. This land is special to the Lord. This land is the apple of His eye. So if you don't have a heart and a passion for the city of God, you're missing half of your Christian life. And I am a personal testament testament. And I have a personal testimony about that because I will be honest and I have to confess, like growing up as a Christian, I never had the heart for Israel. You know what I mean? I would pray for it as the whole, as the whole church um, would remind us to pray for it, as the body of Christ would remind us every now and then. I would read about it in the word, but I've never realized and, and, and um, grasped it fully what it means to bless Israel or you will be blessed and you will be blessed and curse Israel and you will be cursed up until the Holy Spirit gave me this revelation when I stepped into the land 2017. It, and that can be said for another session, but all of that to say, you have to have a heart for the city of God and for, for the Jewish people. You know, this is part of, of the commission as the global church today. You cannot be a Christian and just be in a bubble and and, and just be, you know, for for the global church, for your own ministries and for, you know, for, for pure evangelism period. Part of your responsibility and your call as a believer is to be connected to Israel because Israel is the apple of God's eyes. This is his heart. This is his heartbeat. Again, everything that's happening in this land, the whole world is affected. I'm telling you. I'm a personal witness to that. So I just want to encourage you um, that again, this is the prime time. This is Kairos. This is the perfect time to repent, to purify yourselves, to seek the Lord, not just on your own, but as a household. And don't miss the message of the Lord. Um, amidst this global shutdown and lockdown and pandemic that's happening. This is just the beginning. So we need to be awake and we need to prepare right now. Because when it's too late, it's too late. You know, this shutdown that we're experiencing 
is truly mercy and grace from the Lord. Because he's, again, he's the one making efforts to give us time. You know what I mean? He's the one giving us time to repent. That's grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we just acknowledge your presence in this place. And we just come to you in unity as the as a church to seek to seek your hand of mercy upon our households, upon ourselves, upon the nations we represent, upon the world, oh God. Father, we seek your mercy. Would you cleanse us from all our sins? We repent. We repent as 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 your people, oh God, as as your people called by your name. We repent from, from all evil that we have been doing, that we've done in the past. Lord God, would you cleanse us? We are so sorry for the things that we have done that have displeased your heart, oh God. Father, I just ask, Vashem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus Christ alone, that may each household in Israel and outside Israel, in every nation, that as we step into Passover this evening, that we would just feel your wave and your rush, Holy Spirit. Your, your, your wave and your rush of awakening. That our eyes will be open to whatever you want to tell us at this specific, in this specific point in time. Father, I just ask for just an opening, Lord God, in our hearts and in our minds that all of the questions that we have around the gospel be fed with answers based on the truth alone. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you fulfill your role. You said so in your word that you are our convictor. You are the one who convicts hearts and spirits and souls, Lord. Holy Spirit, would you just convict us, Lord, of any sin would you help us know the truth as you come into our personal houses, Lord? And, and we just ask for your mercy. Would you have mercy, extend your mercy upon each household today? Father, we seek your grace in all of this and we seek your salvation. Jesus, we recognize and we thank you for what you've done at Calvary. Thank you for your obedience to Abba. Thank you for your obedience to the Father, for, for living the, the, the life that you lived here on earth, for having to endure all the mockings, all of the, all of the physical pain, verbal, physical, mental abuse that the world was throwing at you when you were living on earth. Thank you for fulfilling um, the prophecies about you for getting yourself crucified, Yeshua, for bearing all of our sins, for the sins of the world were upon your shoulders, O oh Jesus. And we receive the salvation through your blood alone. We pray that, uh, that your blood be the one that's covering our households today in the name of Jesus. Every, every person tuning in right now and every household represented we pray in the name of Jesus that they would just receive your covering, the blood covering that you have, Jesus, upon their houses right here, right now. Father, would you cover us with a blanket of your salvation alone? We call on nobody else's name but yours, Yeshua, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time and we welcome you moment by moment, may we never miss the whole point of this global quarantine, global shutdown, global lockdown. We pray for healing for everyone affected by the virus. We pray for protection for everybody um, keeping themselves quarantined. And again, at the end of the day, we just pray for that revelation from you, Holy Spirit, that again, we will not miss the whole point of this consecrated time for the globe. Lord God, for the world to spend time with you and to seek you and to know that you are the Lamb of God, Jesus, that we are righteous and saved and cleansed and protected and redeemed only by your blood, Yeshua. Thank you for being our Lamb. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All the love, all the prayers go to you and your households. Um, send me your prayer requests. Uh, if you have them, I want to personally invite you guys to um, 
two events that's happening this Friday, 8 p.m. Israeli time in the Philippines, Asia. That's 9 no, 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 not 9 p.m. Oh, it's actually past midnight. But anyway, we'll post it on social media. But on Friday, um, 8 p.m. is Worldwide uh, Worship Day Movement, care of um, a community in Brazil. And I'm going to be doing a uh, live worship and prayer session over at Instagram at 8 p.m. Israeli time. So if you have an hour to spare and you want to soak in worship and prayer, taking the communion together and just... Um, you know, welcoming the spirit of the Lord in, in our spaces, then join me um, on Friday, 8 p.m. Israeli time on Instagram, tiff underscore toe, T-O-E. And I want to invite everybody as well next week on Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we have started this prayer initiative, Care of the uh, Christian Embassy. Um, it's an online conference call. Again, today, oh my gosh, it was so powerful. I'll, I'll be, I posted the live session on my wall, but next week on Wednesday, 4 p.m. Israeli time in the Philippines and Asia, that's 9 p.m., um, we have this global prayer gathering and it's just an hour again, an hour session of just interceding and praying for all the nations amidst the global pandemic that we're experiencing earlier We've had our session two. We were joined by over 20,000 people online by the grace of God. And all glory, honor, and praise belong to the name above all names. Hallelujah. Um, I'm not going to say more, but um, for you to experience it yourself, join us next week, every Wednesday, 4 p.m. Israeli time. Um, get in touch with me if you need to uh, find the link, but I will post it on the description as well. We have a Facebook group, um, ICEJ Global Prayer Gathering. You just search that on your search bar um, and just join. You'll be automatically added and you will find all the schedules there, special announcements leading to the event. Blessings. God bless you. Um, may you experience the peace, the favor, the salvation and deliverance the Lord has for you and your household today and forevermore. Again, never miss the agenda, the main purpose why the Lord is allowing this um, for the whole world to experience. It's for us to know that the Lamb of God, the Messiah, has already come and His name is Jesus Christ. Okay, from Israel to you, um, Pesach Sameach, Happy Passover, and I'll see you again next week. Okay, kisses! Mwah. Bye!